Hey everybody, my name is Jeff and welcome back to the Raging Deacon Workshop. For those who are returning, hey, good to see you. Listen, I still got your stuff right over here next to my toolboxes. For those who are new to the channel, listen, I think we got plenty of room right over here on the shelves for your stuff so you can come on in. Folks, we are on part two of our pressure tank DIY project. If you haven't seen part one, let me do a quick recap for you. In episode one, we established that I live in the woods. This means that we get our water from a well. Our pressure tank is starting to go and it is buried somewhere within these woods. This is Keith, the best looking member of our family. Hi Keith. Our main goals for this project was to one, get a new pressure tank installed in the garage, run new plumbing from the pressure tank to the old plumbing coming from our well. And finally, we wanted to tidy up some of the electrical work underneath the house, which looked like spaghetti, and also move the pressure switch from the crawl space into the garage. So in this episode, this is going to be our big switchover where we take the plumbing, the old plumbing and connect it into the new plumbing and the old electrical hookup and hook it into the new electrical hookup. So let's get to it. Hey guys, it's future Jeff here. Uh, I'm at the point where I've already finished all the the piping and electrical work, but I just wanted to remind you that I am not a plumber. I am not an electrician. I am not a professional. If you choose to do something like this, please consult a professional before you do. And uh, yeah, all right, let's continue on with the fun. Hey friends. So it's been about a week, it's been several weeks since I've actually filmed this opening. In that time, I've gone on a business trip, I've helped out at Boy Scout camp, and I really have just been waiting for the right time for to do this uh, switchover. Meaning, I've been waiting for the right time for no one to be at the house. And now is the right time. My son just moved into his apartment, new apartment. Um, the girls are away at the swim meet. It's just Keith and I, the best looking member of our family, here at the house. Thus, it is the perfect time to do that switch over. Nobody's here. But we've got a lot to do, so let me quickly show you the pieces and parts that have to be accomplished. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to say a quick prayer to the pieces and parts gods to make sure that we have enough pieces and parts to do the job. Now, I know you're thinking to yourself, Jeff, boy, that probably wouldn't have, this probably would have been a good time to think about all of this ahead of time. And you know what? I agree. You know, um, someone who was uh, competent in all this stuff really would have thought this out ahead of time. All right. Then we need to do some plumbing work here in the garage, and we will be performing two steps. One, we will be connecting this pipe right here to a spigot that's out in the front of the garage. And then we will be connecting this pipe right here to the supply for the entire house. We are also, I know some of you are looking at this video right now and you're cringing and you're like, oh my gosh, Jeff, that pipe is right next to some, that electrical box. What if, what if, what if? We're also going to build, I think, a little, uh, piece uh sort of like a wood box to go over in front of that between that and the box to help prevent any huge problems if there say if it does develop a leak right there next to that electrical box so that's what's here to do in the garage all right so the first thing that we actually have to do is we actually have to shut off the electricity to the well pumps so the pump stops providing water pressure to the house or technically to the old pressure tank. And then we will move on to bleeding the lines of the rest of the water pressure. So 
So, underneath the house, we also have a fair amount of work that has to be done as well. So, first up, we have to connect the pipe coming from the well into our new pipe running to our pressure tank. Then I have to run some additional plumbing from this pipe right here, which leads to a spigot on the back side of our house, over to the pipe that will be supplying the, the rest of the house with water. Next up, we will be then working on the electrical, and the steps will be to take the source side coming from the electrical panel and routing it up and connecting it into this electrical box right here. Then we need to take the wires that are running to the well and run, bring those up into the same electrical box and connect them up to the remaining wires that are in the electrical box. All right, folks, that's the stuff that we got to do. Um, everyone comes home at, uh, I don't know, around midnight tonight. So we got to try to get all of this stuff done. And we're going to try to do it in a bit of an order of priority. Order of priority, we'll switch the water over first. Then we'll do the electrical. And then I will do that little cover over the electrical box at the very end and um, save that for last. Okay, time's a wasting. Actually, step number one, use the bathroom, then turn off the water pressure. Now on to the next stuff. Howdy, Jeff's daughter here. My father's currently fighting the local rock population in our driveway, so I'll be taking over for the meantime until he comes back. So, to start this off, the first problem he encountered was his phone grip for his tripod had broken off, but no biggie. That was something you could easily fix or just move on from, so he went to go grab his bottle of pipe glue, opened it up, only to find that it was dry. No problem, he had a backup for situations like this, so he went to a second bottle of pipe glue, opened it up, dry. Meaning, it was time to go to the hardware store. One trip to the hardware store later. All right, hey everybody, I'm back. Many thanks to Zoe for taking over the storytelling while I worked out some of my anger management issues and made my trip to the hardware store. Also, with the loss of our camera mount, um, we are going to resort to doing some storytelling with, with pictures in some places where I would have just mounted the camera on a tripod and let it run as I work. Uh, but don't worry, we have some handheld footage coming in here as well explaining you know, where we are and where we're going next. So we started with uh, the electrical, and as you can see in the picture here, our first task was to move the source power that was coming from the electrical box and moving it, it up to, or rerouting it up to our new electrical box that you can see, kind of see here in the picture. And then step number two was to reroute the wires that went that go out to the 
well pump all the way in the ground also rerouting that to our electrical box and then we've wired everything together so that the source electricity goes out to the new pressure switch in the garage and then when it kicks on that'll kick on the pump underground then we moved on to our pipes so first was to cut the existing pipe going to our pressure switch from the well to the pressure switch then bending that pipe back so it was close to the new pipe that leads to our new pressure tank and then finally we joined the pipe from the well to the new pipe leading to the pressure tank all right guys here let's take a moment and review where we are at so we've essentially connected all the electrical up so that it is connected to the pressure switch um, that's connected to the to this uh, electrical panel. We've got the the black pipe here that goes back to the pipe that comes straight from the well. That is all connected up and ready to go. We also actually have hooked up. I believe it's the pipe on the left that goes to the rest of the house, the whole house, and the spigot at the back so what we have left to do is to connect that pipe and that pipe and then connect this up to the pipe up there but i figured this was a good time to do a quick pressure test of everything up to the pressure tank so i've got um, a valve right there that's in the off position so we should be able to flip it on and watch the pressure tank fill and hopefully hear the pressure switch click on and off. So I'm gonna start the camera down here, run upstairs and um, turn everything on and hope for the best. And then we will go on the hunt for leaks. Okay, we are back in the utility room. We are ready to flip the circuit breaker. And here we go, no sparks. Okay, okay. Tank appears to be filling. I see drips though. There is a drip right there. There's a drip right there. Ah, son of a gun. There's a drip right there. And a drip right there. All right, so I'm back with the light. Uh, we got, we can see our drips right there coming from the two plugs. We got a drip right there. Um, what you didn't hear, because um, off camera, the pressure switch tripped off. That's pretty good. It tripped off. I love it. We may have to do an adjustment on it, but there does not be a, uh, appear to be a drip, no drips on the big part of the pipe right there. That's good. No drips back there. That's good. This is condensation. It's cold water coming from the, from the ground there. So the pipes are just with all that condensation. Anyways, uh, no drips on those and no drips that I can see up there. All right. We're gonna go off camera and see what we can do. All right, so so I've got the 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 two plugs are here. We go. Where am I? Where's my pointer? So I've got the drip stop from the two plugs. I just for some reason hadn't tightened them all the way, and so those are stopped. Now we have two uh, drips uh, still though on this big brass section up here. Oh, I thought I had focus lock. Let me lock that. Boop. There we go. Um. I had, uh, there's a, so it's dripping from this, the connection right there. And as you can see, it's also dripping right over there. So um, I think the best thing to do, to fix those, I'm going to have to depressurize the system and take things apart a little bit. So I think the best thing to do is to um, actually finish connecting up uh, the rest of our 
of our um, of all of our plumbing. Actually, I lied. We're back underneath the house because we just want to check our plumbing stuff down here. So let's see if we got any leaks up there. No, I think we're good. Sorry for the crappy, crappy camera work, folks. Don't see any? I don't see any leaks. God damn, they are all in like the worst places to try to see into. Any leaks up there? No. Not see any drips. All right, let's check the next one. Now, folks, you might be wondering why do I have all these connections here? Why didn't I just buy one big long pipe? They only sold five foot sections at Menards. They didn't have what I wanted at Lowe's. So this is what I got. This is what we're dealing with. All right. I do not see drips. There, and let's go check our last spot. Uh, last connections, right there. I think we're looking good. No water seeping out, no drips, just condensation. All right, so now we are going to finish the rest of the plumbing. Okay, we've got that pipe together and drying, and uh, now we're going to connect um, that one, I believe, to this one. Uh, the test is that one of these pipes should pull out. They're completely disconnected now. The one that can't be pulled out is the one that we connect to. I'm pretty sure it's that one, because that's the one I was working on that broke on me when I about fell off my step stool. Anyways. On to that one. Okay, we've got our new section, final section of pipe installed, and that connects the whole house and the spigot that's at the back all connected and ready to go. So we're gonna let everything um, uh, dry and harden and cure, uh, and then we will do our whole house check, and then we'll also fix that other leak spots. Uh, that we found earlier By the way, even though we st we've got those little drips. Um, we're still holding pressure really good uh Okay, everything has had time to cure we are going to go ahead and open the switch or the valve here and um, Yeah, I'm gonna do this real quick off camera and then I'll bring it back on once the valve is open and we'll check start checking for additional leaks besides that Okay, we're on. I've actually let it run for a little bit to um, get air out of the line. Um, we really want to pressure test stuff with the water off. That's when the pressure is the, the greatest. So anyways, we're going to start here. We're going to start right here and we'll check this way up the pipe. We've already checked back. We know about these drips right here. So things are looking good. Right there, no drips, no drips, no drips. Let's come up here. Unfortunately, we got drips right there. Man, my plumbing work on the on the non <laughs> CPVC plumbing is not very good. But let's go up here. So there's to the rest of the house. That's looking good. Let's look at the spigot. The spigot line looks pretty good. I'm not seeing any drips right there. No drips up there, so that's good. All right, I'm gonna see if I can tighten that down real quick, and then we're gonna I'm gonna run some water upstairs to get um, pressure in the house, and then we'll go from there, and we'll check things back in the crawl space. All right, we tightened that down with the Milwaukee's there, and uh, that fixed that one. So that is good. All right, into the crawl space, hopefully for one last time. 
Okay, we are back underneath the house. Um, we did all of our work basically in one spot, so we don't have to crawl along a lot. Um, here is where... Uh, oh, why am I putting that light up there? This is coming from the pressure tank down up into the pipe that goes behind and up, goes into the house. This pipe goes out to the back spigot. I am not seeing any water leaking out of there. Excellent. We do have to crawl a little bit. We'll crawl over here. Let's bring our light because it is that joint right there. That goes to our spigot out in the back that we had to put on there. And I am not seeing any water dripping out of there. Nice. Nice. All right, folks, I cannot be happier with that. Holy smokes. Um, yeah, all right. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm sorry. Just happy, I'm happy, woohoo. No, just the leaks on those brass fittings, and I think all they need to do is be tightened up. So let's um, head on back out. <sighs> all right, folks, we're calling this one done. Um, water pressure is holding steady. We know we've got a couple of those drips. Um, it's dripping on either side of the check valve. Um, so we're going to, I'm going to do that off camera after this video is is good but all of the C P V C pipes connections are holding firm there's no drips from those so that is good um the pressure the pump doesn't kick on immediately anymore when you turn something on inside the house pressure tank is helping provide that pressure and once it gets down to its 40 psi then it kicks back on and that is great. That is a success. For right now, I've got a little drip pan sitting underneath the where it's dripping. I'm not going to worry about it. It's it's almost time to go to bed. Keith needs another walk, so we need to do that. So I'm going to just let it drip in a little drip pan overnight. It won't be much. It's not much. Um, but yeah, project done. So hey, I'm just going to say... Once again, thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate you coming along for this ride. Um, if I have to say, what have I learned on this video? That I don't think I'm going to do another, another DIY house project anytime soon on a video. Um, that's just a lot of work. It's just a lot of work. Filming, editing, doing the work, planning. It did make me have to it made me plan better um i know i went to the hardware store like eight thousand times but it actually did make me plan out the steps a lot better and i think the fact that i only had to address three leaks in the system um is is a sign of that so anyways thanks for watching folks we'll see you on the next episode talk to you later Sweet, sweet, steady water pressure. Howdy, folks. Thanks again for watching another episode of the Raging Deacon Workshop. I want to take this time to encourage you to donate any unused tools that you might have. Many of us have that one drawer or that one toolbox over here that hasn't been opened in years possibly decades, you know, they probably contain those tools, odds and ends tools that we got from our for presents or we got from our neighbors. And sometimes we don't even know where we got them from. I know that from watching many other online and tool enthusiasts that there are a lot of tools that belong to what I call the distinguished league of resting tools. And an idle tool does nobody any good. So, if you have one of those drawers or one of those toolboxes, 
please consider donating those tools to a local charity of your choosing. Your donation could help an aspiring mechanic, creator, machinist, or even a DIY enthusiast save a few bucks. So whether you choose to donate to Goodwill or to Restore or to your to your local thrift store, remember, a good tool is more than just a tool. A good tool is an opportunity, and everyone deserves a good tool. Thank you for your consideration.